What's up, everybody? How you doing? How you feeling? Hope you had a wonderful weekend. We got some charts to look at. It's a holiday, bank holiday, so those ETFs aren't trading. Futures are not trading. Everybody's waiting for when this volatility is going to kick in. Are we going to go back up? Or are we going to break further down? We got some charts to break down today. So everybody, let's get involved. Let's see some emojis. How you feeling? How you doing? I'm ready to get into it. I hope you are too. Roll call, everybody in the room. How you feeling? How you doing? Hope you're all doing well. We're about to get this going. So buckle up. What's up, everybody? Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Welcome to the BitLab Academy Daily Stream. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Where is everybody tuned in from? What are you doing today? Are you buying? Are you selling? Are you sitting on the sidelines while these charts show that there's a little bit of a little bit of confusion about what we should be doing? Jumping right into the chart, we can see, look at this liquidity washout to the upside, bringing it back down. Liquidity washout back to the upside bringing it back down all this hope about what the ETF would bring. And it feels like it failed, right? But did it? Hadn't everybody been talking about buy the rumor, sell the news possibilities of upside. Sure. You got a plan for it, but I've been telling you guys for the last couple months, this huge possibility of a potential washout to the downside. And it looks like that price action is coming back down here. Not only has it come down, we've lost this level here, which is a previous high. We've lost this level here, which is marked. This blue line has been an absolute line in the sand for what's going on bullishly or bearishly. And then in addition to losing these two lines, we've lost this smaller time frame, uh, previous resistance, flipped it to support right here, flipped it also held it as support and then fell right through this now i've used it flipped this back to resistance and we've fallen through yet another major line which is this line right here the upper part of this resist this resistance here that's also acted as support and also acted as resistance also acted as support and we have fallen through all three of the three four really one two three four uh of these lines and the the scary part right now is the fact that price has not only fallen below these lines, but in this case, it's come back up, tested this several times, got rejected, now is testing this. And currently, 
is under rejection. So what does this mean for price? Where is it going? What's going on? We got some charts. We got some things that we're going to be going through today. We're going to be looking at this chart and this chart and this chart's very important. Uh, what's going on here is CME futures volume. Uh, some things around BlackRock, some things about the Bitcoin value map and where we could be headed. There's a lot of different points of confluence and different things we're going to be looking at. So everybody right now, if this is your first time, I can guarantee you it's not going to be your last time. My name is Kelly Kellum. Welcome to the BitLab Academy stream. I just hope to see you here all the time because we have a wonderful community, positive, empowering, encouraging. And again, I hope you all tune in to yourself as much as you tune in the charts. You ask what's going on in your life. You ask what's going on with the balance, uh, your balance wheel, your health, wealth, relationships, your family, because crypto can be an absolute avenue towards success. But if you do it at the cost of all your other relationships, and what's the point of it? Let's do this together. Let's do this in a meaningful way. And let's make sure that we can elevate our lives and not just replace things in our life with something else, leaving us at a net equal. Let's not do that. Let's grow in all areas. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, join us here. And we're going to be diving in to these charts right now. I've got a little itch in my ear. Got it. There we go. Now, what do we want to talk about today? Well, first things first, we just mentioned that we are seeing a little bit of a pullback right now, and everybody wants to know, is this just a setup for further upside? In order to even contextualize this consideration, in order to even contextualize where price may be going, you can't just stare at this four-hour chart, or you can't stare at this one-hour chart. You definitely can't just stare at a seven-minute chart, or, I mean, mostly, you cannot stare at a one-minute chart. To get any sort of context of what's going on, you got to zoom out. You got to look at the bigger picture and realize that we are in an uptrend. We're in a very strong uptrend, but uptrends do not result in only upside price action. We talk about this all the time. And one of the things that we really need to pay attention to is let's consider this being a line right here. This pretend this is resistance. We want to find some resistance somewhere, whether it's in, we're not near price discovery yet, but on the way up, we got to look to the left on the chart to see where different points of resistance can come from. We want to see a little bit of a retrace, a little bit of basically taking profit at this level and letting the bears sort of take a swing at downside. And on that swing at downside, we want to see where do the bulls come back in to effectively uh, defend an area to let the bears lose steam and have the bulls take back over and get that essentially rise, retrace, continuation. This is what we're looking for in terms of a trend. Now, everybody wants just this portion right here, just this upside. They're not considering this is the most productive portion of a rally. This is the most product pr productive portion of a bullish trend. And most people lose most, th most of their money in this area right here when in all actuality, those areas, this area that I'm circling right here on the chart is the area that people that have a strategy, they have a plan and they have patience this is where people make their money. So let's not worry. Let's not worry about what we're seeing right now. Oh, we're getting a little bit of a pullback. Well, we haven't even gotten a pullback yet. And in consideration when we're talking about uh, uh, basically a bullish trend on any asset, especially we're looking particularly at Bitcoin at this point, this is not a pullback. This is a slight retrace. A pullback will be if we represent coming down and testing this area or coming back down and testing anywhere in this area. Ultimately, I think it's very likely that we are going to get opportunities somewhere in this area. I think it's uh, more likely than not, I'd say seven to one, that we're going to hit the 39. We're going to close that CME futures gap at 39.6. And I think with that happening and the loss of the bullish enthusiasm, that is basically the, the wind being taken out of the sails from the ETF, not resulting in just absolute upside. You have to remember this ETF, all these ETFs being launched is incredibly bullish for the macro. But this is a new selling event currently, especially with all the considerations, thinking about what was going on with GBTC, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, you know, with the 625,000 Bitcoin that they had, a lot of people buying at a negative premium. So there's some people that were involved in that were, that were also only playing that negative premium. In addition to that, you have to consider. You have to consider there was no failure on the launch of these ETFs. We are in that period, that time window right now where everybody's 
trying to sort of make sense of what all the data is. And this data is slightly delayed. It's not like on-chain data on Bitcoin where we see exactly all the basically net uh, net inflows, net outflows. We have basically T minus one, T minus two days to get those data sets in. In this case, we got Thursday and Friday, but Friday is just an estimation. Today is a holiday, Martin Luther King Day here in the U.S., so we may not get that data until tomorrow or the day after in terms of get, really getting an understanding of where that net flow was. Was it positive or negative? In all actuality, it was the largest volume ever traded on an ETF on launch. And we have a lot of time. We have a lot of things that need to happen right now. The underlying plumbing, there's a lot of stuff that needs to get worked out before we truly see an explosion and growth in these ETFs. In fact, there's a lot of people that sold their GBTC whether they're rotating out of GPTC entirely and out of the crypto exposure entirely, or maybe they're trying to rotate from GPTC to other ETFs that have a lower management fee. But people, when they're moving out of GPTC, that is in the traditional finance system. And there's going to be a couple days, if not a week or more, for some of those funds to get back into their account. So there could be plenty of people out there. Or actually, I should say this. There could be plenty of institutions out there that have 50 million, 100 million, 20 million, 300 million, that they were playing that arbitrage of that negative premium, or maybe even they were just getting exposure because they liked that ETP style product. But now that we have the ETFs out and they have different opportunities, different options, in order to move that money to another ETF takes the speed at which the traditional finance system goes in order to get that money out before they want to decide whether they want to redeploy it or not. And now we see price action is not looking incredibly strong. So what's the incentive for them to really, really dive all of it back into the market right now? There's some things we need to be careful about right now. And we need to like step back a little bit on our hopish speculation and say, what do the charts say? So let's do that. Hmm. I hope you're all feeling good today. I got a lot of rest this weekend. Hung out with my cousin, spent some time with family. What did you guys do? What was the most productive thing you guys did this weekend that was enjoyable? And I don't mean any, it can't be anything with crypto. What's something you did outside of the crypto space, outside of the money space that recharged your batteries? So when you come back into these charts, you can do it with fresh eyes, fresh heart, fresh spirit. That's what we want to talk about just as much as we talk about these charts. So let's dive back in here. And I want to go through some of these things that we're talking about. First things up with uh, Crypto Burb here, Adrian. We've had him on the channel. We'll have to get him back on. But he says right here, if Bitcoin falls under $40,000, it better be just a quick slip to 38 k ish Otherwise, 200-day uh, 200 SMA reversion, meaning price going back, going back to that, uh, that moving average uh, at around 33 k might become a self-fulfilling target for a secondary correction. Still, Minus 20% discount off the high and dominant bull qual uh, qualifies for a blessing that may, uh, that many can enjoy in hindsight. So what he's saying here is this chart right here that I've been talking about in different ways. Shout out to Alexander G gift and five subs. Big love to you. Uh, big love to you. We, let's do a little bit of a roll call. Now we got 144 people in the room and only 39 of you guys have hit the like button. I hope every single one of you looks below this video and sees the word subscribed. Join us here in this community. Uh, we're coming up. We're not quite at one year on this channel yet. And we're already over 10,000 subscribers. So big love to each, each and every one of you community members. And shout out to all the members, the new members as well. I, uh, I appreciate and love all of you. You got the beakers next to your name. The longer you're a member, the, the more that beaker fills up. We're going to be adding some new emojis here and stuff. As people join and fall off, there's a certain certain regulations or uh, certain boundaries you have to hit uh, per YouTube guidelines for t before you get new emojis. And I will be doing a, uh, a couple member streams this week as well here on YouTube. So hope to see uh, a bunch of you guys in here. Alexandra G out here, just giving it away. Big love to you. I love you, soul sister. Thank you so much. Uh, again, welcome to all of the, uh, the members. So this chart right here, this is what I want to show. And uh, by the way, we got all these new members. How about every member in here? You drop on one of the uh, member emojis. What are you feeling right now? Is this a buy the dip? Uh, are you just looking at the macro waiting for the boom? Are you just feeling like a crazy chicken right now? Are you an astronaut in space? Are you absolutely bullish and don't care about what's going on with price right now? Let me know. Drop some emojis there in the, in the chat. 
Um, but this is what we're talking about. And this is a very important chart. Of course, right here, we've got a bit of a trend line. You can just see it with your chart vision, this trend line right in here. And if we pull it back over to the chart, that trend line would essentially, let me uh, come back right over here. Where is this? All the way back here to the uh, 1024, which is October 24th. October 24th. Where is that at? Right here. So it's, it's this line right in here. Go ahead down to the daily. There we go. All right. So this is the uh, line that we are flirting with right now. But all in all, what we see is we have this period, this bullish impulse that came up, some consolidation that was on an upward tick here. Boom, just consolidating just slightly to the upside. And then we get another bullish explosion as we broke through this barrier, this $38,000 barrier and took it all the way up here till we got this last impulse up over $49,000. Incredible. But it can't just be up, up, and away. If it's up, up, and away, it's going to fall as fa nearly as fast, if not faster, than it went up. So we want to see that work that we were just talking about a second ago with the rise, retrace, uh, rise, retrace, there we go, rise, retrace uh, continuation. As it stands right now, this has been, look at this, rise, retrace, continuation. Retrace, an attempted continuation that was cut short and we broke back down. Because we were not able to do this, this pullback, rather than this one, see this coming right here, this pullback came down to this previous high range, push up, pullback, where to come, previous high range, push up, and we did not really break these highs. We broke them in a very min minimal way. We wouldn't really consider this really a new, new high. And this comes down to retest the previous lows. So we're seeing things reminiscent that, I mean, not even reminiscent, that are bullish structure with a little bit of weakness here until we got a larger explosion out of this because of this weakness. Now, where we're at right now, this is that hype coming into that ETF, the ETF deadline, the, 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 the decision, the implementation. Is it going to happen? And people feeling like the more the news stories came out, they felt more and more like it was going to happen. And so there's less there's less people willing to sell and when you have less people willing to sell that allows for the market to see prices rising of that asset and this is what we saw coming all the way back here from october 15th all the way in here until uh january 11th when we had the etf decision so we see the effect of the speculation and it doesn't mean just because there's speculation that drove this price up it doesn't mean that the asset's not good no, the, the speculative market of an asset will overinflate the value and then it will go to a negative, uh, basically undervalue it, <clears throat> excuse me, undervalue it in bear markets. And you want to find where that equilibrium is. So I do think this got a little bit overvalued in terms of what the market is considering here because of all of the uncertainty that was surrounding what was going on with the, uh, with the lack of what people were hoping on the ETF. I think there's a lot, there was a lot of misinterpretation, uh, misunderstanding about what the ETF meant as well. A lot of people thought ETFs coming, we're immediately going to have hundreds of millions, billions, tens of billions flowing directly into the Bitcoin market. Meaning in their minds, a lot of people were thinking this meant that there was going to be a lot of buying on exchange for these ETFs. And that's not how these things operate. They, they settle basically from four to five uh, every day at the, basically after the close. And they have to settle on what the average price was for, uh, you know, the number of Bitcoin that they got uh, that they would need to buy in kind to represent the, basically the, to hold the underlying asset for the, for the uh, ETF representation of that, of that uh, underlying asset. And so, yes, we saw a huge sort of spike in the OTC uh, data metrics on Coinbase last week. We got, I think one day we had like $7 billion, but this, there's going to take some time. There's going to take a little bit of uh, patience for market makers, for big money, for smart money, and also for retail to figure out, okay, we had this speculation, price exploded higher. We still have not had a 30% or more pullback in this bullish trend, in this bullish trend that we see all the way, it goes all the way back here to the beginning of last year, very end of very end of the year before when this is rounding out and basically right, right at the new year, boom, we start exploding higher. So we still have not really gotten like this right here. This was 17%. This right here, 18%. This right here, 19%. Okay. 
So where we're at right now, people say Bitcoin's crashing. Well, let's see. Let's go. We can even go from the top of the wick. From the top of the wick, we are at 14%. If we go from the candle bodies, 10%. So between 10, 10 and 14%, depending on how you do your analysis. The point being here is we have not gotten that pre-having drawdown. And I've talked about this a lot. This pre-having drawdown we see right here. This is 20. This is the last uh, Bitcoin halving cycle. The drawdown that we've seen prior to the halving. Now, why would this happen? Well, think about it. This is the same thing as the ETF. There's a speculative nature about what goes on when you have an asset that has new supply that's cut in half, and especially when that's cut in half on a schedule. That's what the halving is. And people are aware of it, especially as new people come in, new retail, they say, oh man, we're I, I, I want to load up before the halving. And you see this, this narrative, this bullish narrative in the space where people just basically jump in and this basically provides an opportunity for people that are patient in this market and have a strategy and understand what their time frame is that they're they're trading on that they can or, or you investing on. Remember, if you're if you tell yourself you're an investor, you shouldn't be trading on a four hour chart. Investors don't do that. They're looking at weekly charts and they're looking at the position over the period of a market cycle that they want to harness the market volatility on. And in this case, we're getting that pre cycle run up, the pre having cycle boom right here. And then we get the drawdown. Look at that, 52%. And that was just to this bottom. If we bring it down into where the bottom of this black swan was, that's 72% down. But it's a black swan. So I wanted to be conservative. 52% still. We've seen previously, this one broke down through the halving. This was roughly over 40%. And we saw this several times. And of course, just the monetary uh, energy was a lot smaller back here when the market cap was quite a bit quite a bit smaller let's go ahead and measure this right here from this top right here okay all the way to the downside that's it's a 30 36 38 okay, to the bottom there 39 basically 40 percent drop and then we see right here all the way to the top to the bottom 34 30 36 percent so the this 20 uh 15 2016 cycle we saw multiple 30 percent or more now we can expect in some regard that as a bitcoin uh asset matures and we have larger money coming in especially we're going to see changes dynamically in how the market is responding to certain things and even the types of volatility we have and i was on uh listening to a spaces earlier with uh uh several different you know large uh crypto talking heads scott melker and crypto man ran and gareth soloway and eric crown and uh james safart and a bunch bunch of other people and the the question that was uh, that, that people were kind of debating is as the ETF gets more entrenched and there's more capital that flows into it and more institutions get involved in it as well, are we going to see a real difference in how Bitcoin responds uh, over time being that, uh, you know, are we going to see less volatility on a consistent basis? Is it going to be more, more of a, a steady grind up and steady grind down? I do think it's going to result in that over time, but we're not there yet. We're not there yet. And where we're at right now as we're coming up on this next halving date, which is, I mean, look how close this is now. Roughly, I would say somewhere in the first two weeks of April. That's going to depend on how fast all these blocks transact between them. Because remember, the Bitcoin halving cycle right here, the Bitcoin halving cycle is not on a four-year schedule. It's on a 210,000 block schedule. There's a block roughly every 10 minutes. And that, that can be a little bit extended or a little bit uh, diminished. Uh, based on how fast those blocks are transacting. And we're seeing things like ordinals and other layer two things that are happening, uh, you know, things that are basically being cooked into the Bitcoin ecosystem, which is also somewhat affecting block size as different uh, min batches are getting uh, filled up at different levels and making things a little slower here and there, uh, sometimes faster. This makes the having date a prediction, but the point is it is very close. And we still have not gotten that large pullback. Do I think we're going to get 40% pullback? I don't know. But let's see what this measurement here is all the way down to this line here, which if you see where my cursor is, the interesting thing about this to me is over here, over here, I would have said it probably wouldn't go all the way down to this line because we'd be losing this previous high. But where we're at now, as time has presented itself to the market, we forget about the time factor in markets all too often because we want to make money right now. Well, if you want to make money right now, then you need to take a moment, 
zoom out and look at how time has played out and project where time is going to take the market. So what we see right here, if we draw this all the way down, my cursor goes all the way across the screen. If this comes straight down, this basically would essentially be testing these previous highs. We'd be closing the CME futures gap, and we have this macro support line that has been formed uh, back here in November 2022. Support here, support here, support here. And then this would be an X. I mean, for me, this would be a dream buy opportunity to, oops, this would be a dream buy opportunity to get something anywhere here or below. Now, what would that represent in terms of price action to the downside? Well, on a percentage basis, let's see. I'm going right here. I'm putting my mouse right at the top of that wick. That would represent a 34% pullback. So to me, this feels like something that could offer a, a real idea about where price could go. And it also would represent a little bit of a diminishing in the volatility to the downside, which would make sense because the market cycle, I'm sorry, the market cap of Bitcoin is much larger. And we have so many more players that are involved now. And we have the hype of the ETF and what that may bring over the course of this year and next year. So if we got a 34% pullback, this would be, in, I mean, this would be incredible. Now, interestingly, this is 34%. If it comes straight down from here, in reality, what will likely happen if the price breaks down is that it will probably do something like this, where it comes down here, chops it, comes back up, chops people out, and it will likely do something like this, where it takes, you know, a few weeks. This is, uh, it's not even that long, January 15th to January. Uh, so, so yeah, it's almost two weeks. Uh, about two, two or three weeks to get down over here. And this is if it's breaking down, not just chopping sideways, which it very well could do too. So in this case, if this were to happen, this would represent a little bit smaller of a pullback because, come on. Uh, this would represent a little bit smaller of a pullback because it would kind of come down over here and that's about four or 5% less, 30, 32%, 31, depending on where we come down and test this line. The point here when we're doing analysis is not to say it's going here. The point is to, to literally come in with an open mind and look at a chart and go, what are the possibilities of where it can go? And what are my action plans for each? That's what we want to do. So let's go. I've got a couple more things I want to show you that also sh uh, really outlined that this was overheated and there's a likely uh, very strong possibility of the breakdown before it happened. And that is coming back over here. Uh, I just want to point this out. I didn't finish that part of my 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 thought here. Uh, when we were talking about uh, this coming down to the $33,000 level, now this was because this is chart I was showing you here. If we lose this region up here that we're really struggling to hold on to, the short-term holder cost basis is right here at 37. The 200-day moving average is down here at 30, uh, 30 basically 33,000, 32,297. Uh, 30, 32,971, sorry. But so in this region here, we've got a lot of moving average supports as well as what we were just talking about here with the rising level of trend line supports here based on previous price action. So we have a couple different things lining up that are indicating opportunities and where to look for those opportunities when price goes down. So if you hear somebody talking bearishly and you're upset, then take a deep breath. This is not meant to upset you. What this is meant to do, if we are in a bullish trend, as I have absolutely said we are, and we're talking about potential targets to the downside, you should be jumping for joy and say, how can I get more capital available so I can take advantage of the market if it does reach those levels? Because it may not. It may hold somewhere in this region, maybe just dip down here into this 39.6, 39.2 sort of region, the CME uh, futures gap, clear that, come up and then work and then slowly start working its way up from there. But the point is, if this does drop and you're not prepared, all of us, I mean, throw a one in chat right now. If you've ever not agreed with an analyst saying price was going to go lower, it's like no way. And then the price goes there and you were not ready and you didn't have capital available to take advantage of those prices. Now I'm not saying you need to listen to analysts. What I'm saying is, you need to be your own analyst. Take some, take some notes from me. Take some notes from Crypto Banter. Take some notes from, from Frankie Candles, from Tom Crown, from Crypto Face, from DZ, from Joshua Jake, from, from Crypto Jeb, from all the people. Take notes from anybody that you are willing to learn from, even if you don't fully agree with their analysis, because 
when you do your analysis and you say, I want it to go up, but what if it goes down? If it goes down, I'm buying here, here, and here. Breaking up those entries into two or three entries so you're laddering your entry. You're effectively, it's not a dollar cost average, but you're averaging your costs by taking advantage of multiple price points and you're not upset if it clears the first one and it goes lower. You're not like, oh man, I should have got... No, you have other ones set and you get the average price because you can never know what the market volatility is going to bring and where price is going to go on every single tick. This is why you break that up. So this is what I was talking about right here. Matthew Highland, maybe about to go sideways here for a little while. The last four times we saw this much red volume on the weekly. Red volume, see this? Red volume, red volume, red volume. This is a high amount of volume on this particular candle. This is what these volume bars at the bottom when you're looking on trading view. See how the volume is ticking up? We got a bullish impulse here, meaning there's more buying than selling. That's why it's green. And then this red candle here shows that there's a lot of selling, a lot of selling that came in in this candle. Now, we saw here, this is the FTX collapse. So of course there was a lot of, a lot of selling volume. And then price, there was, there was some movement in here. If you're looking at it on like the 15 minute chart, you know, 15, 20%, uh, not 15, 20%. It was, uh, how much was that actually? Let's actually look at it. Let's not speculate. Let's look at, there was some movement. So all the way to the bottom here. Yeah, it, uh, yeah, I was right on. <laughs> 15, 20%. So this is 18% from this low to this high before it came back down to this equilibrium we weren't done in the accumulation phase yet in fact we pushed this higher tested it you know and we the bears took it back and the fact that the bears could not break to a lower low here starts giving more hope to the bulls and the bulls start saying hey i think it might time to go for a run it might be time and you see a little bit of a push up here pull it back bears can still not break this down and so the bulls say now's the time to start stacking and what do we do we start seeing stacking into this until this expansion uh, uh, eventually breaks this high, at which point you point you get a further expansion, testing this level right here. There's a little bit of fear in the market because of all of this downside. People don't believe it. So what do we get? What do we get when we test this high right here? We get some people taking profit because this is not a small move. This move, God dang it. This move right here is, that's a 31% move. There's people that are, want to take profit because they bought low there's other people that are literally just day trading there's other people that bought here thinking this was the bottom and then the market fell out from under them and then once the price gets back they they get back to even and they get out because they're like it's too much stress there's so many different narratives in this market at play at any given time this is why it's great to look at these charts and understand what you're going to see over time is which narrative is dominating regardless of what the reason is for why people are buying or selling and so what do we see when we get to this level this is why we always look to the left when we get to this level a little bit of profit taking but not much how do we know it's not much because the bears only took it down you know on a 31 percent move the bears only took it down five percent and then boom created this massive bull flag that then then launched to the upside so what we want to do right here, that was at the end of a long accumulation. What we've done over here, where we're currently at on the market, we've had a little bit, a lot of frothiness here with a lot of expectation from the ETF. Move up, a little bit of cooling, but still leaning bullish as this is trickling to the upside. Large expansion, a lot of consolidation here, chopping about waiting on that ETF approval or denial, but in this case, we got the approval. Push up, fake out, push up. And was this a fake out? Well, if we look over here to this, uh, where is it? Uh, this right here, bearish divert. So this is a name of the article. Bitcoin's technicals suggest deeper pullback to $38,000. And this is what he was, this is essentially what he's pointing out. There's a bearish divergence on the previous, uh, basically price action going back all the way to the peak that we just had and a bearish divergence. And by the way, I talk about this sometimes, but I haven't really covered it lately. If you don't know what a bearish divergence is, it's okay. I'm about to teach you. It's one of the most effective technical tools that you can have when you're looking at charts because so many people get so focused on the price that they don't understand what the, what the data is telling them about the likelihood of that making a move. 
in the opposite direction. I don't care if price is moving up very fast. I don't feel like I'm missing it if I'm looking at all the technical data is going down at the same time. So what we're talking about here is if we come over here, I'm gonna to go to the traditional indicators, just MACD, RSI, uh, we got money flow on here as well. But what he's talking about is this level, let's turn off the BitLab volume, let's turn off all the lines, this high right here on the chart, this high right here, and we can see this high right here. In this case, we got some chop, but we see that the price is, is uh, resolving to the upside here. As, as price is chopping around, it is working its way up. And in this case, we have uh, basically a little bit of a double top here that was not fully realized. So there was some bearishness here already present. This came down and still working its way up. So we have a high, and this is what's known as a higher high. This high is higher than the high of this region, right, of this range. So what do we want to do? Look at where my mouse is. I see the crosshairs, you know, going all the way across the chart. I do this so I can see when I put my mouse here, I can look straight down here. And I'm looking at where the relative strength index is. And I'm looking at what's going on with money flow. And I'm looking at what's going on with the MACD, moving average convergence divergence. When I'm trying to determine whether or not price is going to move one way or another, I use something called the stoplight action protocol. It's helped me for years determine if this is a trade to take or do I need to sit on the sidelines. In this case, when we're looking at this chart right here, people get so excited because price is moving to the upside. I ignore price. I'm looking at the chart formation. I'm looking at the underlying technical data. I'm looking at the underlying technical details and I'm seeing where we're at in terms of the trend and specific trend lines of support and resistance and how all this other data ties together. Sounds like a lot, but it's quite easy because all I'm doing here is I'm looking at this chart. I see this high, I see a higher high. Then I look to the bottom. Okay, what's going on with the, the momentum that I can sort of track the trend engagement here on the MACD? I can also see here on the RSI, the strength, and then the stochastics help me really find a, an area to pull a trigger. And then I always pay attention to the money flow. So when I put my mouse here and I'm looking down the chart at all this technical data that's representative of where this price is and where the technical uh, data, the strength and momentum, where does that read for this price level? Now, when I move my mouse over here and I'm looking at this next high, this next higher high, see how this is a high? If we zoom this in a little bit, we can see this is higher than this previous high. So now let's look down to the technical data. Is the strength stronger than it was back here? You're essentially climbing up a tree and you're getting weaker and weaker branches. This is saying your branches are getting weak. You're about to break a branch and fall. So what we're doing for with the stoplight action protocol to determine if we want to take a trend, if we're seeing this, the ETF just got launched, whatever news narrative, who cares? I want to catch this before this continues to break out and I'm going to miss it. Well, somebody bought this on this wick here. Somebody bought all the way up here and they shouldn't have. They're buying hope. They're buying their emotions. The technical data, when we look here, I can draw, uh, we can see a, uh, basically a trend line right here. This is higher and we see on the same zone down here when we're looking at the RSI from this point to this point, this is the, the strength is high on this peak. And then we're looking up here on this next higher peak for price action. There's, it's weaker. There's not as much strength here. We also see that the money flow is higher over uh, all the way back over here than it was over here. So the money flow is trending down a little bit. The uh, MACD helping you identify what's going on with this, the trend of momentum, also much higher, much lower. So we're getting bearish divergences. So this would tell me that this is not a green light. This is not, hey, take the trade. You take the trade, whether you're long or short, if you have three or more points of confluence of the price action, the trend and the technical data saying, we all agree, take the shot. In this case, this was saying, hey, even if you sold here and you see price action going up, you could be confident that you didn't miss the move and it's gonna go higher because the technicals are indicating that there was weakness coming in as price is speculatively getting pushed higher. In this case, maybe you would take an opposite approach. So for a long, it's a red light here, it's a red light. So if it's a red light for a long, that may mean that a green light for a short is brewing. 
In this case, we saw weakness coming in as price action is frothing up to the, you know, it's really getting pushed to the upside, but the underlying technical data, reading the strength of the market, reading the strength of the order books, reading the strength of the trend, where's the money flowing, all this stuff. Even if you don't understand all that, look at these. How, always be checking the RSI. Always be checking the MACD. Uh, I like to use the stochastics as well and the money flow. And you can look to all this and say, okay, if this trend for a long for upward price action is getting weak, is there something brewing then for a short? Now that could mean uh, taking a short and selling, selling uh, to take advantage of price action moving to the downside. It could also mean, are you trying to identify where to take profits? Say you have a long that you took from you know somewhere over here, this breakout right here, trying to figure out when to get out. Well, this is pushing up and it's chopping around and you finally get a big bearish divergence. In addition to the bearish divergence, you see the money flow coming out and you also know based on the technicals of the broader picture, when we're looking at all the data here, this was coming into a trend line right here that we had marked out when we did our analysis. So you know that maybe this is a good opportunity to take some profits off the table. Then you can determine based on your strategy and make sure you're going through all the different courses and lessons in the BitLab, in the BitLab courses, we have so much in there breaking down the charts, the candles, all these different technical signals, and really walking you through every step of the way so you can understand how to build a stop light action protocol for yourself on the technical indicators that you like to follow. You have to make sure that you're not just looking at price and you're letting the chart tell you which direction it's trying to go so you get the green light and make the right trades in the right direction and with the right risk management. That's what this is all about, making money and doing it in a way that's effective and repeatable and consistent while being able to take advantage of the greatest asset in history. That's what I'm all about here, is trying to figure out how we can lose less money and how we can make more money. That's what this is about. By the way, if you do want to check those uh, courses out, bitlabacademy.com. Enroll right here. We got so many different things in here. And this is this is just the tip of the iceberg. The Discord is where it's at. Uh, we got more stuff, by the way, everybody that's currently a member there, we got a bunch more. We have more stuff we're adding this week in the Discord. Uh, some regular sessions with Joshua Jake uh, and myself as well. So big uh, love and shout out to everybody that's there. Now, coming back over to uh, what we were talking about, the divergence was showing that there was a likely weakness here and that you know that branch was a little too weak and the kid climbing up the tree was probably going to fall off this is what we got the question is going to be right here are we going to hold this sort of region where we're at right now i i personally think we have a stronger likelihood uh and i think it's still a little bit people are a little bit hands off right now in terms of what to do because it's a holiday we don't have the institutional players in smart money in right now they want to see which direction the markets are going to go tomorrow, especially GBTC. Are we going to start seeing net positive and consistent inflows to those ETFs? Are we going to still see a huge exodus on GBTC? What's going on there? People are wondering all these things. And so I think it may be a little bit, um, the volatility may damper down a little bit uh, between now and tomorrow. Um, maybe get a little bit of a retrace here. We got a very small one right now. Very small retrace right now. Let's get uh, back to the BitLab, BitLab trading stack. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so, so wash out to the downside, high volume candle, see this purple candle, and then stopping volume says it's not going to continue going down. We got the bullish signal here, but the problem here with the bullish signal, and it's not a problem, the, the caveat here is this only resulted in a push up that came up to the previous lows. And then even here, barely... Barely higher, another little bit of a, a trick washout to come back down. I think I think we may be chopping in this area. If we're able to take this out, uh, I, I'd be actually a little bit surprised if we're able to take this out and really just start pushing up. But if we do, I'm watching for a potential rejection here at the four, uh, 43,728, this per, uh, blue trend line that we've been watching for months. All, all year last year, we've been watching this line. It's acted as a great um, metric. If we do get rejected in this region again and come back down, I'm watching to hold here about 41.6. And if we take that out, then we're, we're basically dancing. I think we're going to be dancing into these uh, order blocks that are printed here on 
the BitLab trading stack here on um, uh, the chart. I didn't eat breakfast today, so my brain is not firing. Uh, but this is what I'm seeing. And we, we are seeing this sort of dip in this momentum, much larger dip, much smaller dip. Uh, so I'd be watching here if we get positive money flow, we may be in store to, to d make that move that we were just talking about coming up and testing this point, you know, that where that point of control just was, just moved because it was loading. But coming right into this region somewhere in here, as you see all this area, this was all this choppiness here, uh, rejection here, support here, support here. Point of control is right here on the volume. So if we're able to push up and break out of this, I'm watching this like a hawk. If we're able to take this back out, Maybe maybe we have a chance uh, to continue uh, testing the upside. But as it stands right now, I, I think that's unlikely. I think if we do get a break out of this, likely we'll test somewhere in this order block range and come back down ultimately until we test down to this. Now, before we go, uh, I know I've been, we've had a lot to cover today because there's so many considerations about everything going on. I want to talk a little bit about Ethereum. Ethereum, uh, you know, we're, this is on the four hour chart. I mean, the alts have been performing relatively well in all this sort of confusion around Bitcoin. Remember, Bitcoin was getting speculatively pushed up because of the ETF. All coins were kind of riding a little bit of that coattails, but then what's going on with the flows of Bitcoin doesn't change where people's risk narrative is in the market right now. So right as it stands, altcoins have been doing re relatively okay. And, and that that's also represented, where is that at? It's also represented when we look at the coin market cap watch list. You know, the the, the coins that are down, uh, okay, Seer Network, great. Uh, not great, I'm just saying it's uh, it's 975 in the coin market cap rankings. Marinade's down, that had a huge push uh, the last couple of weeks. Okay, Solana's down. But relatively speaking, it's interesting to see Bitcoin down as much as it is over the last three or four days. And all coins are actually holding relatively well. And many of them, many of them are performing great. You know, uh, everything is a little bit uh, stalled at the moment, um, but the market is holding relatively good comparatively with what Bitcoin is going through at the moment. Uh, Ethereum, look at this nice push up, bit of a bull flag here. Uh, if this goes on much longer, it really won't be a bull flag. Uh, and this is a, this is a descending. Even if you even if it's not a flag, this is a uh, basically falling channel. Falling channels tend to break out bullishly. If this is the case. Two things we need to watch for is this trend signal line right here, this thing right here that was green when it was a bullish trend. Now it's flipped red. It's it's it's, it's looking a little weak here, um, but this is this area is right here at uh, basically twenty five sixty five. We're able to take that out. Maybe we test up into this upper side of the range again. But I'm not going to call for just straight up breakout. I think if we test it into this region, um, we'll have to consider it once we break this trend signal line. Now, as it stands right now, this very well could get rejected here and come down. If we lose, this is nice that it, look at this, testing this weekly VWAP. This is on the BitLab trading stack. Test this weekly VWAP, broke through it, came back up, and now we're sitting right back on top of it. If we take this out, this is from another chart. I don't know why that's on there. If we take this out, I think that uh, especially these lows right here, 2473, I think we're going to be coming down here to uh, basically test this range high over here, which is going to be down here, basically the 24, 2420 sort of region. But things are looking good. I'm not worried about what's going on right now. I mean, this is the market. Getting a phone call right now. Uh, this is the market right here. Uh, this is what we're looking for. Sorry. These halvings have determined the strongest part of the bull trend on each cycle. And we're coming into that. Any dip that we have here, even if we dip to $20,000, which I don't think we're going to do. I'm just using that as an example. I would be so bullish if that were to happen. I think the, the higher likelihood is that we look at this chart right here and we test somewhere between the short-term holder cost basis, which is at 37, and the 21-week moving average, which is at basically 30, 30, 34, 4. If we could test into this region, that would satisfy this sort of pre having dump that we've seen historically on Bitcoin, especially now that that narrative from Bitcoin's ETF launching, that speculative driver has eclipsed. It's going to take some time for real capital flow to really start flowing into all these over time that really starts affecting the market.
But the fact that it's there is a barrier for the bears at the same time. Because it is the case that we have the ETF, we will start seeing some flows uh, over time. We are going to start seeing commercials with all these, you know, uh, 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 online and on TVs, people pushing these ETFs. And then we have the spot ETF, uh, we have the, the having right around the corner. So let's all actually cheer. I mean it. Let's cheer for some downside to give our friends, our moms, our cousins, ourselves, our neighbors. Say, hey, guys, this is what I'm seeing. This is what I learned. This is what's going on. You got to do it of your own decision. But we're coming up on the most bullish time in history, also on a risk-adjusted basis because there's so much built into the Bitcoin ecosystem now and, and governments and nations use it. And I mean, we see what's coming. So if we get the price action that dips down into this region, sub-38, anywhere down there is an absolute buy for me. And I hope, I hope we hit that $33,000 mark. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know where you think price is going. And by the way, if you've been in crypto at any point last year, even the last week, you got to make sure that you do your taxes. You got to make sure that you, uh, you really integrate that. And with that, we have a tax partner, decrypted.tax. You go to decrypted.tax forward slash hit network. Uh, you can get a promo code. There, I'm just, I just dropped it in the, uh, the live chat there. Uh, you can sign up with decrypted.tax. I mean, they've got all the crypto tax professionals helping making sure that you can do this in the right way. Uh, and, you know, it's, I remember the first year I did my crypto taxes. I was on like seven or eight different exchanges. Some were foreign, some were not. I had to get different spreadsheets. It, was, it is worth, uh, I'm telling you right now, it is worth uh, setting up your taxes through a crypto tax professional to make sure that you can get it all sorted. So big love to you guys. This also helps support the channel and they're, uh, they, they know what they're doing. So uh, I want you all to make sure that you're on the right side of this and get your taxes handled. Also make sure you get head over to bitlabacademy.com. Sign up with us, join us in the Discord and the link for the Discord is down below. There's a, a free area and then the premium area. And um, with that, that's all I got. I love you guys. Drop your comments down below where you think Bitcoin and ETH are going to be. What price do you think Bitcoin and ETH will be at on the day of the halving? Let me know. Let's see what you guys are thinking and uh, have a wonderful day. Adios. Adios, muchachos. Thank you for coming. Thank you for always tuning in.